Hello, I'm Robert Bateman and this is the Privacy Corner where I help you stay up to date by presenting you with my top three picks for privacy developments each week. And thank you as always to Privado AI for sponsoring the show. So this week I'll be looking at a very complicated but highly significant CJEU case from yesterday on the transparency and consent framework and digital advertising. The FTC has published a blog post making some very bold statements about privacy and data collection. And the ICO has opened a call for views on consent or pay, which it looks like the UK regulator might be okay with. So first up, this CJEU case from yesterday, one of several data protection judgments. This one is, well, they're all complicated and the CJEU does not write with accessibility in mind. Here, if you're watching, is one sentence uh, from one of the questions presented to the court in yesterday's judgment. So I'll try and explain it in accessible terms, but please do bear with me. So this is all about the transparency and consent framework, the TCF, which was set up in 2017 by the Interactive Advertising Bureau uh, Europe, or the IAB, and it regulates how companies feed data into the real-time bidding ecosystem, as it's called, which allows publishers to bid on the opportunity to present you with an ad based on your inferred preferences and characteristics. So the IAB runs this scheme and the majority of publishers, CMPs and ad tech vendors participate in it. So this system, the IAB itself, was the subject of a complaint in Belgium that led to this CJEU judgment yesterday. And the complaint was made by Johnny Ryan and various other campaigners who alleged that the TC string is personal data. This innocuous sounding sentence is the key to this case. So the TC string is a code of characters that indicates an individual person's consent preferences, for what purposes they are happy, ostensibly, with their personal data being used in the real-time bidding process. The complainants alleged that the TC string itself represented personal data and that the IAB was the controller for this personal data. The IAB said, no, we are not a controller. This is not personal data. We are just a management organization or a standards setter that provides a framework that people can join up to if they want or they cannot. It's a voluntary framework. It has binding contractual rules, but you don't need to be a member of the TCF. So the Belgian DPA largely sided with Johnny Ryan and co. They said that the TC string is personal data in the sense that the IAB has other information it can use to, or can access other information from its participants that it can use to single out individual internet users and identify their consent preferences. They also said that the IAB is a joint controller for activities relating to this TC string. And importantly, they are a joint controller with regards to activities that take place uh, with the personal data collected via this uh, consent framework in the RTB ecosystem. So a lot of stuff happens to your personal data in RTB and some of it is quite sensitive. We know from other work that Johnny Ryan and others have done. And the, the IAB could have ended up being liable for a lot of that activity. So they appealed the, judge, the decision of the DPA and it went to the CJEU who delivered their ruling yesterday. Uh, this, by the way, if you're watching, is an extract from the DPA's decision, which contains this great sentence, I think, a bit pretentious, but they say that to claim that individuals are not identifiable 
by the TC string when the purpose of the processing is precisely to identify them would be a contradiction in terminus. Bit of Latin there for Latin fans. Bit too uh, cringe for a mug, I think, that statement, but still one of my favourites. So the CJEU largely agreed with the Belgian DPA with one important divergence. The TC string, it says, is personal data from the IAB's perspective because it's linkable to other identifiers. There's reference to the Brea case, to reasonable linkability, this kind of stuff. Essentially, the, uh, the, the TC string is personal data in that context. Where the IAB sets technical specifications and rules around how TCF participants process consent related data, including this, this TC string, it is a joint controller for those activities. So it does have some stake in how its members collect consent. But the IAB is not automatically a joint controller for further processing of personal data outside of the kind of TCF remit. So once personal data goes into the RTB ecosystem, it's no longer the IAB's responsibility. It is not liable for what goes on in the RTB system uh, by default, at least. So uh, on balance, a win for the complainants, I think, but the IAB will be very relieved that they are not deemed liable for the whole RTB ecosystem because that would be a huge responsibility. Next up, the FTC has had three very significant privacy enforcement cases this year against Avast most recently, Xmode and Inmarket. We've looked at these before, Inmarket not in much detail, but Avast and Xmode I've covered. And they have published a blog post reflecting on these enforcement actions. And they have made some very bold statements about the nature of privacy law in the US. So Xmode and Inmarket are data aggregators as the FTC puts it. They are alleged to have sold location data without appropriate notice or consent. And they revealed uh, consumers' locations in some site quite, quite sensitive places and sold this data to government contractors. Uh, we have audience segments within markets such as parents of preschoolers, Christian churchgoers, wealthy and not healthy, the FTC was not happy with this kind of quite intrusive activity as they see it. Uh, Avast is a European antivirus company that the FTC says unfairly sold consumers granular and re-identifiable browsing information. We looked at this last week in some depth. They said their software would protect their privacy, whereas in fact they were selling browsing information in aggregate and anonymous form. Uh, no, in non-aggregate and non-anonymous form, in fact, despite their claims to the contrary, allegedly. So the interesting thing about this blog post from the FTC are these three statements that it gives towards the end of the post. Browsing and location data are sensitive, full stop. That is quite a claim, given that the FTC Act, under which these enforcement actions took place, does not actually have a sort of standard of sensitive data like many privacy laws do. Uh, firms do not have free license to market, sell and monetize people's information beyond the purposes to provide their requested product or service. And safeguards must not outstrip companies' incentives. The bottom line is not as important as meaningful privacy safeguards in the FTC's view. So we have an indication there that this rampage on privacy enforcement is not by any means over. Lastly, the ICO is consulting on consent or pay business models. This is the latest in a series of cookie related stuff coming out of the ICO. Uh, in kind of summer last year, they published a joint position paper with the CMA, the Competition and Consumer Protection Regulator in the UK. And they took quite a strict interpretation of how cookie banners should look. And since then, they've written to a number of companies saying, you need to have a reject all button on the first layer of your cookie banner. So this is one interpretation of the GDPR's consent rules, and it is quite a strict one from the ICO. However, 
this week they are calling for views on whether the GDPR allows a consent or pay approach, as we've seen Meta and various news publishers adopt in the European economic area. So it's quite hard to square the ICO's attitude towards cookie banners with the idea of consent or pay. They say that online services must offer a free choice about whether to uh, whether, whether data subjects receive personalised ads. Cookie banners should not deny access to a service unless users consent to personalised ads, and that people must be capable of withdrawing consent without detriment. But, in principle, data protection law does not prohibit business models that involve consent or pay. I struggle a little bit to reconcile these principles. If we have a cookie banner that makes it as easy to withdraw as to give consent and does not deny access to a service, then I, I just I find it hard to imagine how those two uh, principles can coexist in a consent or pay environment. So they also offer some guidelines for how this might be implemented. Uh, is the fee appropriate? Are choices presented fairly and equally? To what extent is there a clear imbalance of power between the service provider and its users? Almost drawing upon elements of the DMA and the DSA there from Europe. Uh, equivalence, are the ad funded service and the paid for service basically the same? So a very tricky area here. I'm not going to pretend there are any easy answers, either legally or practically, but I think the ICO is likely to give this the green light at the end of this consultation. That's all from me this week. Thank you so much as always to Privado AI for their support and I'll see you next week.